you can make life cycle theory very complicated if you like. Uh, when I did graduate work in economics, there were people who thought about life cycle theory very analytically and very theoretically. But basically, it's recognizing that there are stages in people's lives and that they do different things in different stages. And one feeds into the next. So when I talk about it with clients, I talk about first the first phase being developing human capital or acquiring human capital, uh, the second phase being working, and often in that phase people are raising children as well, and the third phase being retirement. And all of those phases fit together in a life. It's important to recognize that for most people, especially early in their lives, human capital is their largest asset and their primary asset. And if you think about it from a full lifetime perspective, unless your name is Gates or Jobs, your wealth is based on your human capital, your ability to earn. So everything financial flows from human capital. It's really easy because when you, as soon as you talk about human capital as earning power, everybody understands it. And when you talk about it as a big asset for them and something that they can manage and something that they can control to a certain extent, people really like that as a, as a concept and as a basis for their financial life. When we're talking about disability insurance and, and, and life insurance, we're talking about that more in terms of risk to, with disability insurance, we're talking about protecting one's ability to spend at a given level. And it's, and it's hard to, it's really hard to do much with disability insurance other than to say, your human capital would really be adversely affected if you couldn't work, and that would really threaten your ability to, to reach that living standard or maintain that living standard. But there's, there's not much analytically that we've been able to figure out how to do other than to say it would really be bad if you couldn't work, right? And it would really, it would really damage you and your family if you couldn't work. And you can insure that risk, and disability insurance is a way to do that. With life insurance, we talk about insuring the living standard of the survivors. And that's pretty direct, right? People, people understand that if they die, they want their spouse and their kids to be able to maintain their living standard. And life insurance is a way to do that, and, or really the way to do that. And we can talk about how much life insurance people need each year in order to maintain the living standard that they have or that they could afford. Uh, so from, from that perspective, it's, it's, it's pretty direct. When we're, when we're talking about investment risk, then we're talking about doing the Monte Carlo analysis that we do on living standard rather than on assets. <music> Typically, when advisors talk about investment risk, they're talking about um, a 5% probability of failure and that being acceptable, right? But the, when I wrote the paper, I, I talked about, well, suppose we had a 5% probability of failure in your life insurance. How would you, how would you feel about that, right? I mean, th th would that be okay? Because your probability of dying between 35 and 65 is roughly 5%. So you don't have to buy life insurance. And that's just approximately the same probability of failure, right, as you get with a standard portfolio analysis. So I, I, I found that kind of interesting. That's right. I think that's harder to see with investments because the, the, the probability that you'll fall short, that you'll run out of money, people don't think about, well, what does that mean? What, what, what would my life look like if I ran out of money? And we, we can talk to people about that and show them that. And that, that, that tends to concentrate the mind, too. So when you think about risk in a life cycle framework, I think it's useful to think about the different ways that risk manifests itself and the different levels of risk that we seem to be willing to accept. So if you think about, let's say, the risk of dying while one is working from, say, 35 to 65, the chance is 5%. If that were to happen to a family and to the, to the primary breadwinner, the family is going to be financially devastated. 
And that's a risk that most people, when it's expressed to them that way, are unwilling to accept. But if we talk about the risk of the investment portfolio failure or running out of money, and we say, well, it's only 5%, people seem to be willing to accept that, even though the risk could be equally as large. Uh, the, impact may be, the impact may be smaller because people do have assets that don't depend on the portfolio. They can rely on Social Security, for example. But if people need a lot more income than Social Security income and their portfolio is exhausted, the impact could be quite significant and quite bad. But because it's so far in the future, clients have a hard time recognizing that. I think the best stories are about younger people okay. um, and, and how bringing their human capital into things and how causing them to think about that allows them to see that they can afford a considerable amount of investment risk when they're younger. Uh, and it, it really does, people, younger people especially, when you talk about their, just take their, their, um, their perspective working life, right? You say, well, you're 25 and you're gonna probably work for four years and you're making $100,000 a year, that's $4 million. And you've got $50,000 in investments and you could lose all of that, let's say. But compared to the $4 million, it's almost not worth talking about. So you can afford to invest that $50,000 very much in stocks and a very high proportion in stocks, lose a lot of it, and chalk it up as a learning experience. It's not, gonna, it's not going to cause your life to be financially devastated. But if you're 65 and your human capital now as a proportion of your total assets is pretty small, and now that $4 million is financial assets, and you put it all in stocks, and you have a, a devastating loss, that's a much different a much different experience. And, and, and especially younger people uh, find, I think, that very helpful.